Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 24, verses 12 to 18. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and stay here, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandments I have written for their instruction. Then Moses set out with Joshua, his assistant, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. He said to the elders, wait here for us until we come back to you. Aaron and Har are with you, and anyone involved in a dispute can go to them. When Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai. For six days, the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud as he went up the mountain, and he stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Norma. One of those great moments in the story of faith. Something that perhaps we do not give enough ten- attention to, that great story of Moses and the giving of the law, the great Ten Commandments that are written on the tablets of stone. But it is part of our scripture and part of our holy word, and that word holy is, is a recurring theme in that book of Exodus. Moses hears the word However, we imagine that. He hears that voice of God saying, come, come up to me on the mountain. For those who who felt at that time that God was someone they could not meet, it was a frightening invitation. But we who see in retrospect It's a very gracious invitation. Moses is invited to meet his God and to come up the mountain not in fear but in worship and in attention, to give God attention there. The word of God, come up to me on the mountain. What is the holy word for for you this morning? And so Moses goes up onto what becomes recognised as the holy mountain, Mount Sinai. Mountains. We, we as human beings, respond uh, to mountains. They've been sacred places for not just centuries, but millennia, in many, many different cultures and many different faiths. They speak of something and powers that are beyond our powers. Just imagine how mountains are created, all the, the geology that is so extraordinary, and we're part of that, and a tiny part of that amazing creation. They are sacred places. They are places where, uh, thin places, in that word from Iona, that phrase from Iona, where Heaven and earth seem very close. And there he meets the holy God. And that holy God is is described in as uh, mystery, as cloud. The the next slide, I don't as 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 far all that the um, the Israelites could see on the mountain was was this blazing light and fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Or as cloud. 
And there's sort of two of the, the mysteries of, of life, aren't they? The, the clouds and the, the power of, of cloud formations and fire. They, they both speak of both power and mystery. And then light. And there he's given the law, the holy law that will make the Israelites a holy people as they live by those commandments of honouring God and loving their neighbour and holding to truth. And Moses stays up on that mountain for how long? For 40 days and 40 nights, and we've got that number coming again, that 40 number. After the, the great seven number, the cloud was there for six days, and then the seventh day, God speaks. And then Moses stays on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And of course, for Christians, that links with Jesus spending those 40 days in the wilderness, tempted and tested but always turning back to God and God's way for him. Lent is a period from Wednesday of 40 days. And depending on how you count it, that will take you uh, to the eve of Easter. If you... Uh, don't count Sundays, and traditionally Sundays are not uh, fast days, they're not part of Lent in that sense. They're, they're special. They remain special. They remain days of the Lord. Or if you count the Sundays, it takes you to Palm Sunday. It takes you to this very centre of our Christian faith, the Holy Week events and the great triumph of Easter Day. That is the mountaintop that we are walking towards. In the table setting, um, Julia and Linda moved the little cards up. Could you, the pair of you, you you're going to be worked hard today. Could you pass those out? We're going to be spending 40 days in this journey towards the great mountain top of Easter Day. And as you look at this picture, you could reflect on where you are on that mountain or that valley at this time. And where do you want to be? Where do you want to be? Maybe the, the cloud and the consuming fire and the light of this holy, glorious God is sometimes a bit scary. But we're being drawn to that great light of Easter Day. Well, it's good to have that message in uh, the darker days of February. It's so good today to see the sunshine. It transforms the world around us. And one of the things that transforms nature at the moment are the signs of spring to come. And our next slide gives a prayer. It actually came from, uh, it comes from Iona but, and Kate McElhagger, but um, was shared in the lighthouse a newsletter, Foghorn for Lent. How many of you have seen snowdrops this year? Yeah. Well, the, the manse at uh, Bourne End is, the garden is covered. If anyone wants some snowdrops, I can give you some snowdrops without question. 
Let's pray. Into the dark world, a snowdrop comes, a blessing of hope and peace, carrying within its green heart, symbol of God's renewing love. Come to inhabit our darkness, Lord Jesus, for dark and light are alike to you. May nature's white candles of hope remind us of your birth and your presence with us and lighten our journey through Lent and beyond. Amen.